Hi friends. I am here today uh, with a little bit of a different tutorial. This one is more hands-on. So I'm trying a new camera. I don't have to use my Zoom share screen camera. I'm trying something different. Today we are going to talk about some of the things behind me. Actually, just one of the things behind me. And it's my one of my most favorite tools. And it's that guy. Let me find it right there. That is my Arbor Press. Uh, his nickname is Chunk. I like to name my machines just because I'm up here by myself a lot and I'm kind of a dork, really, uh, if you haven't figured that out already. But I love Chunk because he helps me do everything that usually I have to use a uh, hammer with uh, for setting hardware, punching holes, embossing, all kinds of things. Chunk can do it all. There are tabletop rivet presses that are excellent quality that you've probably seen in different groups. If you're, um, if you're stumbling on this video, I'm assuming that you're looking for an arbor press or a press of some kind. The benefit of Chunk is several things. Number one is the price, it's $60. Um, number two, they're widely available. You go to Harbor Freight, you grab it, you've got it. They do ship as well. It, it is heavy though. Um, also, it's it can be used with so many things, and I'm going to show you a bunch of the things that I use it for. I have this bag, and in this bag are all the things that I use on Chunk. So I will be doing, later in this video, we'll be going through and we'll be um, doing the close-up of each individual thing so I can show you how it works um, live. I wish that I could remember the person who told me about the Arbor Press. I do not remember that person's name, and I apologize. I do know that I first watched a tutorial about this with Jordy from Jordy Leather. He's wonderful, so I'm going to have a link to his tutorial in my description. So the credit to this um, goes to someone other than me. I'm just showing you um, what I have learned. So I have bought very few, very few specialty tools. Most of the tools that I use on a daily basis come with the sets that I use. So like rivet presses, um, that kind of deal. I also want to mention that I We'll put timestamps down below, and if you don't know what that means, it means if you push the little down arrow underneath uh, the video above the comments, the description box will drop down and there will be blue hyperlink numbers. You click on those and it will take you to the various parts of the video that you might be interested in. Um, thanks to Jeff at Oakland Roots for teaching me about that one. Okay, so let me show you the things that Chunk can do. Most often I use Chunk for setting rivets, and the first rivets that I bought were Dritz from Joanne. They work really well. I like them. Uh, they also, the benefit of the pack that I purchased, they come with the rivet setting supplies. So, hold on, I have magnets on here and they're sticking. So, it comes with the little rivet press and the anvil that's sized for the larger rivets. And then it also comes with a hole punch, but that one's over a chunk. And so, didn't need to buy anything different. I simply set the um, item that I want to punch a hole in down. I put this in the machine. I pull down the lever very easily, almost no effort whatsoever. Punches a hole. I put the anvil. I put the rivets in. Put the anvil under. Press it down. Rivet is set. What I like is that a lot of times when I'm bag making or sewing, I'm doing it at night when my family is sleeping, and apparently they're not big fans of me hammering. Um, and then swearing once I screw up the hammering and hammer my thumb or something. So, chunk makes everybody happy. All right, moving on. These are amazing. I present to you the lack of frustration. So, I'm not so great with scissors and cutting, which is why I have my cricket right there. Um, these will help you get beautiful strap ends. They come in a set from Amazon, graduated sizes. And so when you're doing things like um, anything that has a tab, a snap tab, this will cut your snap tab perfectly rounded. It, uh, they have different sets that are square, diamonds, ovals, all different kinds of shapes. These are the half rounds. So this is amazing. Again, I'll show you how to use it when we get over to the machine. Okay, so there's that. Speaking of cool holes and shapes, I have this set. This is a set of hole punches, sorry. And as you can see, it comes with all different kinds of shapes. So square shapes, 
um, these little guys more narrow. Okay, um, this shape. And so you simply stick it on top of your material, pull down the lever, and then you have a perfectly shaped like keyhole, whatever, all different kinds of shapes in there. So that's amazing, also at Amazon. Um, I'll have a link to everything that I can find. Sometimes the things that I purchase aren't available anymore, but I will do my best to find links for everything and put those in the description as well. Okay, at Harbor Freight, um, don't tell Amazon they'll be jealous. At Harbor Freight, I also bought this kit for $9 and it is a graduated hole punch kit. I thought at first I wouldn't need a huge hole punch of this size. I was wrong. I need this because eyelets and grommets come in all different shapes and size, or shapes as well. So this has been really helpful. Um, it does, this is also the hole punch from that set and I use it all the time. There's even some material still in there from the last time I was cutting holes. But very inexpensive set and does a wonderful job. So $9 for this guy at Harbor Freight. All right. Speaking of grommets, this is a grommet toolkit that I purchased at Lowe's or Home Depot um, for something I was doing with tarps. But you can use grommets of this kind in bag making. Um, you might not want to have this brass color, but if you do, that's fine. This comes with everything you need. So it comes with a hole punch. It comes with the anvils and the setting um, discs. Everything you need and the instructions. The only difference is that instead of using a hammer, like I said, you will just use that to press it down. And when we're pressing, it's not like we're really manhandling it. It's pressing, pressing, it's done. The only time that you have to put a little bit more force is when we're gonna do the fun stuff and I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, so that's the big grommets. There are also different smaller grommets that you can buy inexpensively at Hobby Lobby. Eight millimeter grommets. That's what these guys are here. And they also sell the kit to set them in. Now the grommets at Hobby Lobby, I want to say were under five dollars for a, a little package of them. And then this setting kit, which you only have to buy once. Let's see if I can use my hands real quick. This was $2.99, so a uh, very inexpensive tool that you did have to buy. Now, I uh, used Dritz, label, uh, Dritz rivets when I first started out doing bags, and the Dritz rivets that I bought from Joanne came with the setting tool. But, um, I think I already told you that. Sorry, I'm running into my, my brain. Um, but I also purchased a smaller set of rivets from uh, Amazon, and they came with the little smaller set so um, you don't have to and it's flat on the bottom so it just simply just sits on it like a tabletop and that's what I use for those but you can do line snaps western snaps um, spring snaps and I'll be demonstrating uh, spring snaps over there um, using most often just the tools that come with the hardware so hold on I have a couple more now I did get these line snaps at Hobby Lobby and they were nine dollars and I'm not impressed with these um, I can't even get them to work with a hammer. Uh, at first I thought maybe Chunk was letting me down, but it wasn't. It, it was the quality of the snap. So I would not recommend those. Oh, okay. So grommets. Here are some more little tiny grommets. Also from Amazon in all different colors. And again, this kit comes with everything that you need. The um, anvils, the hole punches, and the setting. I'm not sure what this is called, but we'll call it a setting post. So it has this little hole that accommodates the nubbin in the grommet. Okay, let's see. I've got more. Oh, spring snap. So this spring snap kit was, you guessed it, from Amazon. It, again, comes with all the tools that you need. It's flat, and so it just simply lays on the, on the little bed of chunk, and it's ready to go. Okay, so you can do all different kinds of spring snaps. But there's more. Before I get to the fun stuff, um, in addition to hardware, like just installing your hardware, this is an idea from Nikki Kinder, who is all things amazing. And if you have not seen her makes in the bag community, uh, Nikki Makes is her business name, and she is incredible. I wish I could be half the bag maker she is. So this is um, 
cut, plastic cutting mats from Dollar Tree. I just put it on my um, measuring grid and then made marks so that I could have different styles. So three rivets in a row, one perfectly centered, diagonal, you get it, right? I'm going to show you over there how easy it is to punch it, but you would just make your marks, punch, and then this would be a little kind of a scrap piece that you keep on the side, and then when you're ready to make a bag and you want your rivets to be the same, you would place it, make a mark with a marker, take your item over to your rivet press and set your rivet. All right, so for the fun stuff, I purchased um, this just for sampling at Hobby Lobby, and it was on sale for 99 cents, but do you see that tooling? This impression here, we can do that with a rivet. Not the rivet, Crystal. We can do that with the chunk, with the arbor press. So let me find what I used to do that. So this is a little tool that comes in the leather tooling section. These are all also leather tooling suppliers. You get your leather wet, you let it sit for a bit, and then you simply put this in chunk, put your material here, pull it down and squeeze, and there you have tooled leather. But you can also do leather tags. You can do suede, you can do vinyl, you can do all kinds of stuff. So it isn't just for that. If you are a craft, um, long-term crafter, you may have had some of these. Some of these embossing plates that were for Sizzix. I gave all my away, so I had to go and buy some new ones to demonstrate, but you can emboss your leather or your vinyl, um, even marine vinyl from Joanne. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's going to show up on camera or not, but it's backwards there, but it says be happy. So you could create an entire textured um, piece by using these here, right? How cool is that? Okay, last thing I'm going to show you, and then we'll go over to the, over to Chunk, and I'll show you up close. This is an alpha number set. So you can emboss instead of the daisy shape or you know the physics plates, you can emboss actual numbers and spell out your business name or you can make something cute like this bracelet, uh, key fobs, all kinds of cute things with this. So it's just a simply a series of leather dies and a rod here. And same thing as before with this guy. You just put it in, press it, and you're good to go. Okay, so let's get into actually using Chunk and I'll stop talking. This is basically what the Arbor Press looks like when you get it home from Harbor Freight. And um, later on, you will probably this part will probably be cut off because to get the best picture, um, I have to turn my camera horizontally, and so this gets cut off, which is part of the reason that I'm redoing this tutorial. But it comes with this piece here, and if you watch the Jordy Leather tutorial, he instructs you, I think, to remove this and put an iron plate, but I find that this works just fine for bag making and for putting in the um, hardware. You can spin it and so that these various sections um, kind of take up the space that you would need to put down your tools. But I typically use this, and this is a Sizzix cutting mat, um, but any kind of a cutting board that you have um, this one was well loved back in those good old Sizzix days, um, but this one um, can be replaced with any kind of a little cutting board of this size or even a piece of wood. I don't, I don't think that it matters. I have replaced, I was having this just sit on my surface, but it does slide around a lot and so I've just added this non-slip um, material from uh, Contact, the Contact brand, and it works really well. And so what I'm going to try to do for this video and see if I like it this way better overall is put a little bit more of that non-slip material here, put my Sizzix board down and have this as my cutting surface. I'm gonna see if I can turn it to the side. It is very, very heavy. This is what it looks like on the side. Uh, mine is a little bit messy and I've already taken off some of the tools that I use all the time in the earlier session when I was showing you the tools from the bag, but I just keep these little button magnets here and then attach my tools. Um, it isn't maybe as pretty as it should be, but I don't know, this is just how I use it. Maybe I'll clean it up right now while you guys are visiting. When you do get it from Harbor Freight, it's very greasy and oily. Um, so just beware of that, you will need to clean it well. 
and I suppose you could spray paint these and make them look really cute, but I don't know. I haven't gotten around to it yet. I don't know how much it weighs, but I would say, I don't know, 15 pounds, 20 pounds, probably. I know it's heavy. And I believe that this is the half ton Harbor, Harbor Press, but I would get whichever size um, you can afford. Okay, so let's go into the actual using it part. I'm going to show you how to create a little template using Dollar Tree mats. You know, those are my favorite. And sometimes we wanna make sure that our rivets are pressed perfectly. Um, I have drawn lines on this little Sizzix plate that show me where it lines up here so that my uh, lever doesn't end up running into it later like this. So I just always keep it aligned here. And then I've drawn a little square that shows me where that ram is going to come down just so I have it as a guide. So I put my hole here, I hold it in place, bring this down and press. Now there are um, places on the Arbor Press back here that are to anchor it in place. I just haven't found a permanent place for it yet so I haven't anchored mine down. Okay, so now then I have this hole and then I can use this to mark on my projects where I want the rivets to go and I'll have an evenly spaced pattern. So that's what I wanted to show you. I have this magnet here. This is optional. You don't need to have this. Uh, and most times I don't use it, but it's here and it just kind of helps hold the tools in place. Um, I find it easier just to kind of hold it with my left hand and bring the lever down with my right, but I'll just show you how it works when you have it in here. So I am going to push down fairly hard. This is the one tool in which I have to use the most amount of pressure. And because I don't have this permanently screwed into my work surface, sometimes it does cause the arbor press to lift up. If you're going to be doing a lot of this kind of work, you will in all likelihood need to secure your arbor press more permanently than mine is. But here you can see the perfect cut for that end tab. And then this is where you would just line up your X-Acto knife and continue the straight cut all the way down. Um, it's also a great way um, that you might want to use for different kind of hidden strap connectors um, to give you a nice cut this way. Anyway, I think you can see that that's a pretty amazing little tool and it comes in all different sizes. Next tool I'm gonna demonstrate is one of these hole cutters from that set that I showed you. And the knife edge has this different color variation on the edge and this is the blunt edge and this is what we will align with our tool. So that magnet will hold it here, um, but this is actually one of the times where I usually don't like to have the magnet because it can be a pain in the um, neck. <clears throat> so you can use it if you want to, and I'm gonna demonstrate it with here. Again, these holes are the ones, these larger holes in the tab ends are the ones where I have to use the most pressure here. And I'm going to lift it up and see if it cut all the way through and it looks like it did. Occasionally on this one, you have to help it a little bit, but this time it came out easy. And there you go. Okay, and so this would be the same concept for any of these tools that come in this kit. Now we're gonna do the spring snap. And this is the, for me, this is the piece of hardware that gives me the most anxiety. I'm not quite sure why, but it does. Um, so the first thing we need to do is punch a hole and I have just both pieces of vinyl stacked on top of each other. Um, Chunk doesn't mind going through two pieces at all. So we're just going to bring this down. Very little pressure at all. And actually I used it a little bit too much and it went all the way into that mat. So be mindful of that. That's one of the reasons why I like this. Um, I'm going to actually redo this one so that it's down a little bit further so when I install the snap I don't have any trouble. Even though it's just for pretend, I don't, I don't know. Okay, so now I have my holes and now I need to install my snaps. So I need a um, coin, kind of backed looking piece, and then I need one of these nubbin posts and it has a hollow area in it. And then I need this 
kind of port piece and this fits into here. And then I need this short little stud and this fits onto this little nubbin post. Okay, so when this would of course be the right side because we wanna have the pretty side of the post on the outside of our vinyl. And then this is the port. So we're going to set this here. And then the kit that I purchased from Amazon comes with the anvil. And so because we're using that coin size side, we wanna use this disc area here. And I put this in here. And then now I need to use, again, the tool that comes with a set and it has this kind of pointy edge here. This is going to go down into the snap set, right into the hollow part of that post and then we're just going to very gently bring this down and it's done. It made a little crunching sound. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear that or not, but now that is set in place perfectly. Okay, now we need to do the other side. So again, um, we need to use the tool that came here. We're going to flip it and this is a kind of a cone shape. Let's set this here. This time we are going to have the post come from the back and then this is going to fit in here. Hold on, let me make sure you can see that. So our post went in from the back and then now this little nubbin shape or plug is gonna go on top. Put this on top of the cone shape of the anvil. And then this time we need the other tool, the other post, and this one has this kind of a shape here and the little nubbin fits right into there. So we're gonna set that here making sure it's secure, bring this down and press. Okay, super easy. And now this is installed and we're just gonna go ahead, snap them together and there you have it. Easy. I don't like the hammering. The hammering makes me nervous and I always tend to sometimes like get this skewed when I'm holding it and then I I've messed up some cute projects because I haven't gotten my snaps right, but this um, works really well. Rivets all the time. This is one of the things I use most often, and I am going to go ahead and just grab the piece that came with my Dritz rivet set. And these are just standard. I think that these are eight millimeter. Okay, so I'm going to set these over here to the side. The thing I really like best about this is I'm not unscrewing and screwing in um, these various tools they just sit here and to be honest these just sit on the side of my machine because I use them all the time so first I need to punch a hole again so I'm going to grab my hole punch this is the one that came with the um, set from Harbor Freight but this is a set that came with my Dritz tools and I, I keep it there too why I have two of the exact same hole punch I don't know but I do okay so I'm going to punch a hole Put the rivet in. This is a double-sided rivet. So I put this in, put the cap on, it snaps into place, and then I need to just set it. So I put the um, anvil here, take this off, and I need the post. Sorry, I almost forgot it. This is part of the filming snafu so hold on just a second sorry that's part of the filming I have it in the bag so this is the um, setting post and it has a little concave area here that goes on to our rivets pull the lever down and there our rivet is set So let's try this thick leather and see how our hole punch does for that. And I'm gonna show you a smaller rivet on this one. I am gonna remove this magnet because I don't find it helpful really for this kind of a setting. Haha, -ha, like literally setting. Okay, so we're gonna just pull through. And there, that hole punched through that really thick material with no problems at all. Set my tool back here. And then let's find a rivet to use. Well, I'm not gonna be able to use my little tiny ones because the post is shorter. Okay, 
but I am going to demonstrate these um, sets from Amazon that I was not really a fan of at first because it kept wrinkling or crimping the rivet head and somebody had told me that I should instead um, place the different side in that anvil cap. I'm going to actually get a shorter rivet. That's the nice thing about this set is it does come with different thickness posts. Snap the cap on until I feel it click. And there it is. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead. This is a this is the double-sided anvil that came with the set. It has a smaller one for the smaller heads and the bigger for the bigger heads. Rocket science. And here is my setter. I'm making sure that I'm getting within that box that I've drawn on my board. Give it a gentle squeeze. It doesn't take much pressure at all, almost none. And then you have your rivet placed. I have this uh, cross out. I've gotten it wet. You are supposed to let it sit after you dampen it until it's the original color but still cool to the touch but I have to get this tutorial made so we're gonna kind of push our luck and move along a little bit. The first thing that I want to show you is the embossing and so let's use I've only done the embossing on the vinyl, but let's try to use this cute little bee on this cross. And so it is a little bit larger than the bottom of this ram, and so I am going to have to press it in a couple of different locations, and I am gonna use a bit of force for this one. And actually, I don't have to move it because, look at that. So obviously, we would want to make sure that we were cleaning this up, and this is just to demonstrate what it can do, but is that not adorable? The things that we can do with this is amazing. The bag that I showed you, I've dug this guy out. I'm going to set it down here. Give a small press, lift up, and then now we have that beautiful little daisy. This is the last of the embossing or, um, that I'm going to show you. If you were doing it, this on vinyl, it works on vinyl as well. You just need to heat the vinyl up first, either with a hair dryer or a heat gun or ironing on the back of the vinyl just so you get it pliable and then you do this exact same thing. You just um, simply impress into it and it's done. And I've left it for um, over a week now and it has not kind of bounced back and changed its shape at all. Um, so I think it's somewhat permanent. You can also buy your company logo in a stamp like this on Etsy. There are different suppliers who do that. I haven't ordered one, so I can't recommend someone to you personally that I've used, but do look on Etsy and you may be able to find um, your own brand and you can do this. So you stick this on, press, and there's your number. Okay, enough with the embossing. Let's move on to some other things we can do. Installing these eight millimeter grommets, and these are the ones that I purchased at Hobby Lobby. And this is the tool set that I purchased separately. I think it was $2.99. I have added one of those little magnet buttons to the RAM so that it will hold this tool in place because this one tends to fall off. I've gone ahead and punched a hole and I've already practiced with this one just to make sure I wasn't wasting too much of your time. Um, I don't install these very often and so I kind of have to fumble through them when I'm um, doing them infrequently. I used this hole punch. This is the one that came from Harbor Freight in that variety pack, and this is a 5 16 inch hole punch. You want your hole to be somewhat smaller than your grommet, otherwise it will pull through. I was making that mistake initially um, by um, using too big of a hole. So this is a two-part grommet, and one of the stems is higher or taller than the other. And I need to and I still, I'll forget this every single time. I need to practice. See, when I put it in, this is incorrect. You can see that inner bit right there. 
So that means that I have this backwards. I want to put this one to the back. Um, this extra bit of material, this kind of um, frame, you can hit that with a, with a lighter or you can trim it off with scissors. Um, whatever you care to do or hide it like that. So in this instance now, you don't see that inner ring of material. So I think that I have to, you'd think I would remember since I just did this, put it pretty side down on the anvil and the setting tool face up. So I'm gonna go into here, I'm gonna give it a little press. And then I don't know if you can see that when it picks up, but you can see the fabric kind of hop a little bit. And that's how I'm, I mean, I'm gonna be surprised if this isn't perfectly set. Okay, and there it is. Perfect, no pounding, just pressing. Okay, well, I, I've done this a few times just to make sure that I could recommend this to you. If you do this upside down and you put the back side against here, it will get stuck in here and it won't set right. So you have to do pretty side to the plastic and then this side to the wrong side of the, of the material. Okay, there's one more thing that I wanted to demonstrate for you, even though it's a grommet and we've done that in the other sizes. This is a kit from Amazon. Its anvil looks a little bit different, so we're just gonna go over this one real quick. And the uh, hole, it comes with its own hole punch, tweezers, the setting tool, and then all these different colors and varieties. They're all the same size, they're just different colors. So let's go ahead and do this lime green. So you need a portion that has the taller bit, and then you need the washer, which is like a little flat washer. Okay, let's set those aside. And of course we need to have some material to punch. So I'm gonna just set these off. If we were using another system, the tabletop rivet press, we would have to be screwing these in and out. We don't need to do that. We're just gonna set them aside on our board, get our hole punch. Give it a squeeze, take it out, set this here, put our material down. Um, I lied. Need to put this through the pretty side so we see it. The color coding makes it nice. Then put it face down on here. Put our washer on. I don't need these. Put this portion here over this post, pull it down to set it, and there you have it, right? How perfect is that? Okay, so that's the last one that I wanted to demonstrate. I am sure that there are a bunch more. As I'm going along making projects, I hope to do that on camera soon, um, and then I'll be using Chunk for actual projects to kind of demonstrate for you and hope that maybe I can come up with some other ways that you can use this. I do want to say that in no way am I saying you should not purchase the tabletop rivet press if that's what works for you, but I do think it's important that we talk about um, more economical options for folks who um, don't have the resources or don't want to allocate their resources towards one specialty machine. Um, there are less expensive ways about um, kind of completing the same process, which is setting hardware and punching holes. And I just wanted to share that with you. But the other small businesses that own the tabletop presses are amazing companies. And by all means, if that's who you would like to use, I, I, I would say go for it. They're amazing companies and I hear nothing but wonderful reviews about them. All right, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll be seeing you soon.